it will benefit all children, all children from the suburban areas and in the city of Chicago who have had no hands-on experience with farming, have no clue where anything comes from except the store shelves, that we can educate them on this so that they become a little bit more aware and can hopefully in the future become more self-supporting of themselves. That's our goal. We just want these kids to learn you can survive if you know how to do things with farming. Hey guys, I'm here at the Homer Harvest Days Fest and uh, I came across a cool little uh, booth here uh, and they have a pretty amazing story. I'll, uh, I'll pan to them and let them tell it. Hi, I'm Sylvia. This is my husband Joseph. How you doing? And we are the struggling owners of the historic John Lane Farm where the very first steel plow was invented. And that steel plow was invented before John Deere by Mr. Lane. Mr. Lane came from the East Coast into the Midwest when Chicago was just a very small, little tiny substation, not even a fort at that time. Came in and came into our area to farm. And he was a blacksmith out East and he thought, you know, this soil is hard to turn over. He tried it with wood and it wouldn't work very well. He had to use paddles to scrape the blades because it would stick. And so he met a gentleman that was there that had a lumber mill and he thought, you know, I'm going to put together some saw blades. I'm going to try to refine it with my blacksmith and make it into something that'll cut quick and I won't have to scrape it and I'll be able to turn the prairie soil over a lot easier. And this is what Mr. Lane did. He used the saw blades, he fashioned them into a plow and the plow looked like this. Very simple, but it was very functional. It was like this. This is an artist's rendition of what it looked like. With the saw blades and a pointed tip on it, and then of course set up for the horses. Now this worked very well, and the, the word soon spread. And over the time uh, that he had started this process, Mr. Deer came by to his place and saw what he was doing and he went on and three years later he patented it. So Mr. Lane was a humanitarian and he believed in helping fellow man and don't have to take credit for a whole lot of stuff, just help everybody. And that's pretty much where we're at. I've been on the farm since 1964. My uh, family that had it was from 1948, fourth owners from the American Indians. And the value of the farm is all the history. It is the only place in the United States that has been set aside by the U.S. government back in 1936 that says this is who John Lane is. This is where he invented the first steel plow. They gave $1,000 for the first memorial. Then there was no more money, nothing. And so over all the years, we've all struggled trying to make this work and it's very difficult. It takes a lot of cash to get this barn in, back into shape. The barn itself has been uh, interviewed by or looked at by the Historical Preservation District, and what they're telling us is in here, all the beams that were in here are all repurposed from Mr. Lane's original first barn. So the barn has so much historical value to it. What we want to do is completely restore it and we want to turn it into a community center that says Historic John Lane Farm. We want to teach about farming. We want to have this all encased in here with farming traditions and ways and the benefits of what Mr. Lane did with the first steel plow. We want to hold classes for children, of which we've already started. We have the first class two weeks ago and now the second one. The students from a Montessori school have come and they've learned about the farm and in addition they are working on the farm and they find this wonderful. Now they know where the crops, how the food comes, where it comes from. It just doesn't come from a grocery shelf. So they're actually getting hands on. They're excited. They love it. Uh, they get a chance to look at the chickens and have chickens interact with the chickens. Uh, we have shown them about the honey, how important honey is for all of the crops where the bees have to pollinate everything and then they of course produce the honey so we extract the honey there. Uh, we are really trying hard to let the public know that we're in desperate need. 
Yesterday, uh, we had a gentleman come from a trust company and with hopes that we can possibly fix this top of the barn, he said he needs immediate action now. He says by December he's in fear that the whole thing will collapse inward if we don't have support. My husband and I put $15,000 that we borrowed to put into this and unfortunately it's not enough and we need the help now. We can't do anything more without financial support. The county doesn't have the money, the state of Illinois does not have the money. The historical venues don't have money to help on this. Uh, we have started a nonprofit uh, last two years ago. It's called Historic John Lane Farm Incorporated NFP, and it is a 501c3, so you can donate to it and write it off. And anything you can do to help preserve this one location in the United States that has all this history centered around it. If this man didn't do what he did, you wouldn't have such good crops because he invented this, how to open the soil and open the prairie and produce really good tasting crops. So if you can help and find it in your heart, we'd appreciate it. And I'd like you to introduce my husband, Mr. Couple, Mr. Joseph Couple. How you doing? retired teacher, 34 years. Let him talk. We try to keep everything uh, as original as we can. We use old equipment. I've got a 1944 tractor that I use to plow and a 1958 tractor with a bucket that we use. And uh, nothing is new. We try to do it the old way. No fertilizer. We don't use any pesticides or weed killers. And the only manure we use is from the chickens. So everything is about as natural as you can make it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, everyone. These are our eggs. They're beautiful. We have how many breeds of chickens on? Uh, we have nine. Nine breeds of chickens. Nine breeds of chickens. Yeah, and we're trying, and we have some crossbreds, and we're trying to show the children that eggs shells can come in different colors, and that means the eggs are just as good on the inside, but they're beautiful, more beautiful to look at on the outside because of the different breeds of chickens. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? So we don't want to lose this, we don't want to lose it, we don't want to lose that barn because for us, making it into the community center, the historic John Lane Farm Community Center, it will benefit all children, all children from the suburban areas and in the city of Chicago who have had no hands-on experience with farming, have no clue where anything comes from except the store shelves, that we can educate them on this so that they become a little bit more aware and can hopefully in the future become more self-supporting of themselves. That's our goal. We just want these kids to learn you can survive if you know how to do things with farming. And I hope we don't lose it, so we sure need your help. You heard it, guys. Go here to their GoFundMe. Check it out and um, you know donate anything helps